So it's early July and we're in the Chardonnay Vineyard at Niagara College. As you can see, the berries are tiny, they're rock hard, very green and actually full of acidity. Malic acid. It's one of many acids that we have in grape juice. And in fact, in the wine, there's a whole other different set of acids that might exist depending on how the wine is made. Chardonnay, for example, can have very low acid wines, can have very high acid wines. And that's the great thing about Niagara. We've got lots of acid and it makes it a fantastic food wine. No better place to talk about sugar than the beekeeping program at Niagara College. The bees are busy making honey behind us. Mother Nature gives the bees the honey. Mother Nature also decides how much sugar is going to be in the grapes. But it's the winemaker who decides how much sugar is going to be in the wine. Ice wine, full of sugar. The Chardonnay we tasted earlier, not so much, a dry wine. In the world of cooking, we're all very aware of the impact of sugar in our desserts. But are we thinking long and hard about those little sweet ingredients that we're using in all of our cuisine? The hop yard, the perfect place to talk about the next element in our wine and food matching discussion, bitterness. But not just bitterness. We're talking about tannins. Tannins that come from grape skins, that come from seeds, stems, and even oak barrels. Okay? Tannins, what do they give us? They give us a little bitterness. They give us astringency, that drying sensation we get in a full-bodied Napa cab. This Syrah is full of tannins, beautiful tannins, dry, a little bit of bitterness, and something I am definitely going to be thinking about when I'm looking at the wine and food pairing. So now we find ourselves at the Niagara College teaching distillery. Uh, what are we talking about? Alcohol, obviously. This is a space where we use the raw materials from Niagara and we transform it, our team with Dave and the students transform it into alcohol. Alcohol plays a very important role in the wine and food pairing discussion. I happen to have with me a balanced Riesling, 11% alcohol on the lower side. It could be as low as 5% in other wines of the world and it might get as high as 20% in a fortified wine. The difference between those two wines is going to have huge implications for our wine and food pairing.